Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to install DCC into an Athern Genesis GP9. With every DCC installation, you want to test out the engine before you start. So, on the test track, I'm testing out the motor controls on DC power with the headlights as well, and the rear light just to make sure they all work properly before we begin. This DCC installation is a little different, however it has the same properties. Basically what we're doing is a decoder swap, meaning that we're bringing a decoder from one model to another. Now this model that currently has the Tsunami 2 does not have the detail parts or is missing parts. Um, and the newer model does have this, so we're going to bring the decoder over to the newer model. To open up the Athen Genesis GP9, all you have to do is remove the coupler boxes. There are two Phillips head screws. You, once you remove that, you'll be able to open up the shell. Sometimes the shell gets a little bit stuck on the plow. All you have to do is just pry a little bit open with your fingers and you'll be able to open it up. As you can tell, this model already has the Tsunami 2 decoder in it, so we are going to be removing it and adding it to the new model. This is the diagram that we're going to be following. This diagram is from Tsunami, or Soundtracks.com, and we're going to be installing with 1.5 volt headlights. Now, I know these are 1.5 volt headlights because they're from Athergenesis. At this time, they used to make them with 1.5 volt headlights. Now, some of them will have LEDs, and they will be labeled on the box of their LEDs. This is a Tsunami 2 EMD PNP type decoder. So it's going to be a board type just like you see here. Um, I do want to mention that this is how the lights will be installed and I'll show you down the road how they're going to be installed with the 1.5 volt lead um, as well as that little F on the left side of the board indicates that it is for the front of the locomotive. Today I'll be using a Weller soldering station. I can't find the actual name because this model and type is discontinued. I bought it over five years ago and it works perfectly fine. This is the new model. Opening is the same way as before. All you have to do is remove the two coupler boxes and you will lift up the shell. Now I do want to mention you want to be careful and not damage the window shades as well as the antenna on top. That's why I'm offsetting the model on the foam cradle. I start by removing the plastic tabs on the DCC ready motherboard. I'm going to save these tabs because I'm going to be putting in the other model. You don't have to save these tabs at all. You can throw them away. You can keep them for future use. It doesn't really matter because we are going to be soldering these wires. I do recommend always soldering wires. I don't like using these plastic pieces to hold the wires. It doesn't guarantee a connection, but it's all personal preference. After removing the plastic pieces, we're going to be preparing the wires to be tinned. Now, we want to make sure that none of the wires got damaged, so just make sure no insulation is damaged, ripped open, or the wires, you want to make sure that they also have a good amount of wire left. So if you only see one strand left, go ahead and cut off the end and strip the wire with some wire cutters. If you don't know the process of tinning wires, I highly recommend looking it up on YouTube. But the process is simple. All you do is you put your soldering tip onto the wire. With your other hand, have solder and touch the wire with the solder. Now that will create a solder to flow into the wire, creating a nice solid bond. Don't forget to tin the headlight wires as well. After we have completed the tinning, 
I'm going to remove this weight because the speaker will be going here. Now we can move on to removing the decoder from the previous model. I'm going to be using the soldering iron to heat up the previous solder and using tweezers to remove the wire. You can also use a soldering wick to remove the solder onto the board so you can have a clean board. Since I'm going to resolder it anyways, I'm just keeping the solder on as it is. I am not removing the speaker wires because I'm going to be keeping the speakers. If you plan on changing the speakers, you can definitely remove the speaker wires. Here I'm also removing the speaker itself with two screws that hold it down. The same screws that held down the previous weight. I'm going to be keeping those to reinstall the speaker. Now that we've removed the decoder, let's bring the new model in. Taking a look at the decoder, if we want to wire this engine correctly, we got to know where the wires go. So the red wire from the motor will go here and the black wire from the motor will go here. Motor positive, motor negative. Now the speakers will go right here and the next one's going to be the rails. So the right rails will go here and the left rails will go here. There are two ways to solder the wire. First way is to put it through the hole and solder. The second way is putting the wire on top of the pad itself and then solder. They both have the same method. All you do is to put the solder on the pad and touching the wire itself, as well as adding solder to the pad. This will create solder to flow like we did in tinning and it'll create a nice strong bond between the wire and the soldering pad. Since there was already solder on the soldering pads, all I had to do is reheat the pads and install the wires. If you do not know how to solder in general, highly recommend again watching it on YouTube. That's how I've learned and I've learned eight years ago and my skills have progressed throughout the years and I'm sure yours will too. I noticed the board was almost touching the speaker and the speaker outside is metal and I don't want to create any problems for the future so I decided to use electrical tape to isolate the board from the speaker. Next we are going to install the rear and headlight wires to the decoder. We are going to be using the 1.5 volt pad on the decoder. Now if you are using LEDs you do need resistors. I am assuming they are going to be around 3 volts so I would say either a 1k ohm resistor or a 680 ohm resistor. Whatever suits you best. But with the 1.5 volt bulbs we actually don't need resistors because there is a spot for 1.5 volts output. We are going to be grabbing one lead each from the rear light and the headlight and going to be twisting the wires together. We're going to be installing the twisted wires here, that 1.5 volt pad, and the headlight and rear light wires respectfully on these pads right here. You can also look back at this diagram to help you wire the headlights. After all that 
that soldering time, it's now for the moment of truth. We're going to be putting back on the shell, reinstalling the coupler boxes. Make sure that we do not pinch the coupler cup bar when installing the coupler box and installing the screw. Time to test out the engine on the test track. I'm using a Digitrack system. Now I'm going to turn on the track power and hope for sound. If you are not getting sound, you want to make sure you check your speaker wires, or maybe the speaker's gone bad, you can want to change out the speaker itself. If you're not getting any sound, if the speaker is good and also the wires are good, you may want to reset the decoder with CV8 equals 8. We are now testing the motor controls going forward and backwards, and also making sure the headlight and rear light turn on. If your engine is not going forward or backwards, or the headlight or rear light's not turning on, Again, make sure the wires are good, make sure the solder connection is good. If the headlight does not turn on, you could just have a burnt out bulb. Since the headlight, rear light, motor, and sound all work, now all we have to do is stare at it. Thank you very much for watching my how-to video on DCC. I'll be doing more in the future. If you have any feedback, comments, questions, please leave it in the comment section below. Until next time, see you guys then.